<laughs> and as I was saying, John Taylor's done all the artwork, and I just think this is just absolutely amazing. The, the, the macabre circus with all these well, very he's hellish take characters. All the strange yeah. dark characters. Can you talk for a bit of the um, any meanings of the, of the pictures and where they come from? Well, I think I think John this. Question. Well, I think we we've talked through this quite a bit with John. It's like it, this was like the the circus bread and circuses, but it's like come into this dark world where everything actually is distorted and um, nothing is what it seems. And a lot of the people there um, are, are characters which are actually represented in the pictures that he's done for each of the songs. So yeah. just yeah. here you've got what we call Pigman. Um, who's in uh, the song Yes, yeah, Sure, No Problem. And this guy here, who, who we call Eyeball Man, he's kind of become our mascot, really. He's the kind of epitome of the business businessman with the pyramid with the eye in the middle head, which, as you probably know, has always been a very strong Freemasonry-type sign. It's on the U.S. dollar bill. Um, and if you believe in conspiracy theories, you know, it would be one of their symbols. So you've got various characters on here which crop up on the other pictures as well. And the hellish ringmaster uh, inviting you to go into the Circus du Macabre. And as you can see there, it says, what does it say? Something about shows, freaks, etc. coming in. So it really, it's kind of come into this world, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Come into this world of possibly altered perception because all these characters that are in the songs are trying to adapt to the reality that has been imposed on us for. 3,000 years yeah. and many people are waking up so in a way it's saying come in and maybe you'll just wake up recognize your humanity yeah recognize who you in are in all its warped <clears throat> senses yeah <laughs> as an individual okay so that was that this is the other side of it there there's eyeball man again there as you can see <clears throat> he's walking through the the dark wood of the co of, 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 of the subconscious really the id and then, if I can just pull this out, and by now you'll probably notice that some of these have been on the screen behind us. There's Eyeball Man again, and then we've got various pictures for each of the songs going right through. One of my favourites, The Last Tree Spirit, where Little Sprite holds the very last tree spirit that remains on Earth in this industrial background. He's trying to plant it in the concrete, not with much success. Psychiatry, this guy is just surrounded by as many phobias as John could think of. <laughs> <laughs> and he reckons, he reckons they've all got names. I think he came up with about 200. Amazing, yeah, absolutely amazing. <laughs> and the guy's just kind of sitting there absolutely bog-eyed. And, and this, this psychiatry song is, is I think, very tongue-in-cheek is yeah it is very tongue-in-cheek I mean, it's meant to be but obviously underlying that there's a serious very serious serious yeah. issue but yeah and then we kind of go this is yeah sure no problem now here we have pig man and the three-headed dog which is the three heads of the government if you like which he has total control of money spilling out everywhere and the opposite is the poor guy in the street and there's mayhem prostitute you know it's just falling to pieces and amazingly this looked like Stokes Croft it looks Bristol, like Stokes Croft yeah which is uh, a very in Bristol kind which of John didn't know area. at all no. and uh, I said there is, that is amazing because that looks like the, the, just across from the, yeah. um, the pub it does, yeah. the, the Croft has yeah, been a building yeah, opposite it's been derelict for as long as I know yeah it's a huge four-story building vortex this is, things are starting to get pretty dark here where someone's actually locked in the sanatorium and John did this kind of circular thing where you you have the Doctors of Dissonance, and turning it round, it looks as if it could be a slightly better scene, but it's <laughs> it's not. It's just another altered perception, and this is pretty damn scary. Reminds me a bit of uh, American Horror Story Asylum. I don't know if you've been watching that. Uh, yeah. And then this one again, the uh, crows. Again, this is a sort of sh shamanistic type lady. Again, who's kind of, I guess, someone who's kind of immersed herself into an, an alternate world, isn't it, of yeah. magic? And here she's pulling out the soul of this dead soldier in the form of a crow, a white crow. Tied to the machine. Again, this is kind of probably, you know, m m Metropolis. That was influenced by, by, by the sort of Metropolis 
world where you've got uh, all the, the rich people on the top and the poor people down the bottom, yeah. keeping the big and, engines and going. Literally tied so to the So basically, that, that's what that's about. Lady of the Wild Things, a Kali type figure. Well, it's the age again. It's the age of Kali, the Kali yeah. Yuga, the end of end of the age of Kali, which is what's happening at the moment. And then supposedly, everything changes. And will destroy, yeah, everything. Well, everything is, well, it's just a measure of destruction before you can rebuild, mm. which is what that song's about. And, and John had all the lyrics, yeah. and then he did each song. Sort of over a period of about eighteen months, I would give him some lyrics, and then he would come up with some artwork. And, he, and on some of them, he really struggled because oh. he said, oh, "I don't know what to do with this one, and I think this should be like this." Mm. And oh, I'm going to scrap it and go back to it. And, and then he would eventually he would get to the point where that's it. I'm not going to fiddle with it anymore. That's that's what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And it was great, really, because we supported each other because he'd never done anything like this before, and we'd never worked with an artist in this in this mm, way before. This way. So it was actually quite a learning process. The birth of it us. really was. Yeah. Stunning stuff. Yeah, and yeah, that's the final great. track, Touched by Angels, where he went for a more kind of um, Holy Grail type Almost sort like of thing. Almost like in Medieval, yeah. Uh, but the song is is kind of an air It's a very positive, very it positive. is a very positive song, because what I want people to get from it is the fact that, you know, life is full of <coughs> these ups and downs <coughs> and darkness and light, and it's basically about that. It's about dark and light, and I think everyone's got that in them, so you've got to accept it, yeah. I feel. So, so far we've done... Two shows. First one was premiered at Midlands Arts Centre, yeah. the Mac in Birmingham. Then we had the CD launch last week in Worcester Arts Workshop, and now it's working hard to get our promotional heads on and get uh, some really good gigs up together for 2013. And playing in the right places. It's got to be the right places. With the it's right, right with, with people who want to sit and watch it. And not, <coughs> yeah. Not, you know, you just can't do this in a corner of a pub. No. It just doesn't work. Well, there was. A, you know.